Hello and welcome to the March Bulb Log Video Garden Diary Walk. I'm starting up in the shady part of the garden. The sun's just rising. It's sunny. It's another sunny day with blue skies. But my goodness, there's a very strong cold wind. So it's not that great for being outside. But it's... I'm running out of March, so I thought I'd better do something. This is the one of the beds and it kind of... You'll see this same plants repeated around the garden as we move around, and this creates a harmony around the garden. I'd like to say here as well, welcome to any new viewers, because my last video amazingly jumped up to 10,000 views in a week. I've never had that numbers before, so something happened to push it out there. So thank you for everyone that viewed it. and. Thank you and welcome to any new subscribers. I'm glad you found me. I hope you'll keep following. Maybe dip into some of the 200 videos that are on my channel, looking at the garden through the, through the months and the years. And also, if you want to read more, I've written a garden diary, a bulb blog diary, which you will find on srgc.net. The, the link is on my about page on the front on the thing. So do go back and dip in. There's over a thousand diaries fully illustrated and writing. So looking at everything that goes on in the garden. So end of that advert. So now on to the, the plants. We're looking here at Eranthus guinea gold and Eranthus in various forms and down here the Primula marginata and in among the Eranthus you may spot all the wee Narcissus cyclamineus, and there's a wee Corydalis there, and the white erythronium you're seeing are some of the Caucasicums just starting to go over. Also down here is the, um, peeking through the foliage, is Hepatica. There's another Hepatica there, and these are interesting Erythronium dense canis with brown pollen and yellow pollen which is quite unusual and unique to the most eastern range of that species. We're going to see more Corydalis as I go round. It seeds around all over the garden. comes in a range of colours. Some are more noticeable and more attractive than others. But it's the combination and the mixture of all the different colours that to me is the real joy of them. And there I see the, the red leaves pushing through. We'll look at that later in a later video. That's Jeffersonia just coming through. Coming around here, oh here's the wee treasure, the Scroliopus, Scroliopus bigelovii. And then up here, a wee group of Erythronium caucasicum, seeding around nicely there. These are seedlings down here, you can see. So it's a, it's a gradually increasing little colony in this area. And we've got that repeated across the garden in other areas as well. So coming out and the past there you'll see some red Corydalis, pink Corydalis, all different colours. If I walk up here the, the trailer for future videos is the, all the erythronium starting to push through that seed around absolutely everywhere. And as I say, up into the shady part of the garden, while snowdrops are going over, just a few metres up to the, that direction, down here there's still, still some are quite fresh in the, in the shade. You see trilliums coming out there as well. More Aranthus. And yellow, I see yellow Erythronium tuluminense, one of the earlier of the Erythroniums to flower. 
of the of the Western North American ones, that is. The sticks lying everywhere in the garden because we've got magpies and wood pigeons nesting up in the trees. And they they're gathering sticks and they drop more than they put in the nest. So I'm forever tidying up sticks. Around here the other we saw a wee Primula marginata. We've got a number of different forms of Primula marginata. This is one slightly nice bigger leaf. They are lovely plants, that lovely mealy foliage and those lovely cherry flowers early in the year and they seem quite happy in our garden. Clump of Narcissus cyclamineus. As we move around you can see even the same the light and shade we get at this time of year. Coming down more Narcissus cyclamineus, the wee cluster here seeding around. And all the the line of stones is the bed. This way is supposed to be path, but it's how plants migrate in the garden. And to be honest, it's the plants that rule in our garden. If they want to migrate out of the bed and choose to grow in the path, then I'm happy to let them do that. And it's the same everywhere. So which way we've got this way. I suppose another plant we're going to see as we move around are hellebores. They're another one at this time of year. A great plant and they seed around and that's how I like them. I'm not really keen on big clumps. There's a group in the shady a white one. I'm not really keen on the big clumps. I much prefer them growing in smaller numbers scattered around like you might see in a wild population. Here it's mostly foliage of the snowdrops gone over but they still leave this lovely green carpet of foliage as they feed the bulb and hopefully build the flowers to decorate the garden in next year. Of course there are some different snowdrops around still. Here's one that some of the enthusiasts might no notice. The inners and outers are all the same size. This is this is one of the many EA bowls that I planted out all over the garden. And this is very typical of the how the Corydalis grow. The, the pinks and the purples are solida and the creamy white are Malkensis. And they seed about. I know some people will complain and say, oh, they're weedy, but they're not weedy. They're just generous and they're very welcome in this garden. And they work well with the crocus. This is a crocus, one of the Thomasinianus seedlings. It's another that seeds around. But the Corydalis, a whole range of them, as I say. We come up here. Some of the earliest of the Erythronium dense canis, the flower, are the dark forms. And this is a nice, really nice dark form. It's actually been out for a wee while. But this is the first day I've managed to get out when it's open and I've been available. It's a nice dark red Corydalis. But you can just see how this range and variation if you allow plants to plant themselves, you get this lovely natural look. Less than natural is that horrible bare patch, which sits, I've spoken about it before, below the feeders. And it's because the, the town pigeons come in and pick up the bits the wee birds drop and trample everything to death. It's very difficult to get plants to grow under there and I'm still trying to find a solution. I don't want to stop feeding the wee birds because we get literally hundreds of songbirds coming into the garden every day to get their food so we want to keep them coming. So we'll skip around here a bit. Round past the 
cobble bed here, which is early stuff's over. Now we've got various little Narcissus, Asturiensis types, minimum, minima, minus, minor, whatever they all are. More Corydalis. Seeding again. And then Hellebore is how I like them to be. Seeding around. Not growing into great clumps necessarily. But seeding beautifully. Can I get home in and some of these a bit. That one nice there, getting lit through the back. Not very good with this zoom, sorry. But then it's not a very great camera. But this is the... What you should aim for in your garden is to get green carpet. Green mulch will keep the garden moist. It'll stop the evaporation rate, so it'll help trap the moisture in the ground for the benefit of the plants. Coming over here, another trough, Primula marginata. I'll just come round past the wee bonsai larch, which you can just see the green starting to come out and all the cones from the previous year still on the tree. A trough with Primula marginata and Saxifraga oppositifolia. Not the best year for the sax this year. It seems to do a good flowering every second year. I noticed that with a lot of the Saxifragas. This one didn't flower so well last year, but it's well flowered this year. Down there you might see a box. That's a box of Aranthus guinea gold and that's how I increase it every year, I repot that polystyrene box and take the little ones out. I take the, the bigger ones out rather, and plant them out and put the little ones back in to grow. And that gives me a steady supply of, of that, of the one, the cultivar, while the other forms just are allowed to seed around. Guinea gold doesn't set seed, by the way. Up here, more of the wee narcissus I've been showing you. But the, this Primula marginata came out was has been out for a while, so it's starting to go over with Narcissus asturiensis and Narcissus cyclamenius. Some of the wee anemones pushing through there now; they'll come up soon. Skip here, class four. Primula marginatus. And round here to the erythronium beds if I move up here first because these, these you'll see plenty of in the later video. But there's a one of the early forms of erythronium tuluminense in flower. We've got a number of forms. These are erythronium tuluminense here as well, but not yet in flower because they flower almost a month after the early ones. And again, that's the advantage of growing plants from seed. But I mean, just look at the... And, and the Corydalis is really not what this bed's intended for. It's, it's a bed for erythronium. See some more dark ones starting to go over. And then this wee bed down here. Corydalis solidus seedlings. Hepaticus. You can see how windy it is. And we are low down here, a bit sheltered. I went a walk just before I did this video and near got blown backwards at times. But there's Hepaticus white and purple with the pink Corydalis. All seeding around in this wee bed. And there's a, an Erythronium seeded down into the bed as well. The moss covered rock is actually broken concrete, so. How lovely is that? Even a tiny little bit. You can get this great love and variety and pleasure watching nature unfold in the early part of the year. I'll just come back a wee bit and show you. It's only a tiny wee bit that, but 
packs a huge punch at this time of year. And I'll be back to this, as I say, in the next couple of months when it's full of erythronium flowers. Round here, the bigger bed bulbs, bigger hellebores, more hepaticas down here in the, the wee bed. A row of Fritillaria imperialis. Every year, some stems flower. And some don't, they take a wee while to get back, but every year we'll get flowers. More hellebores. And then we come up to the, the shadier beds, there's a lot to come up in here. And also, I speak about the paths. The paths are made up, with, we've got paving slabs that are spaced out with gravel in between and what happens in the in-between bits is the plants take over so there's a huge amount of crocus in there and this gap you, you see that's all aranthus sorry I'm not winding it up properly that's all aranthus if I come around here this one reflects what's going in, in across the garden so we've got Corydaris, Erythronium, Snowdrops all sorts seeding about in there and that's what happens in the paths if it wasn't for the paving slabs we wouldn't be able to walk around there's an airplane coming over so you have to excuse the background noise a minute up here it's <coughs> still as Rosenii started to come out the earlier bulbs have gone over there's more wee narcissus, yet again Corydalis and Hepaticus. I should mention above my head the rhododendrons. There's one in flower which if I just come up this path we can probably see over there. And that's rhododendron, the lovely red Thompsoni. Quite a size, as you can see, the greenhouse beside it, it towers over the greenhouse, the birch tree behind. There's the cardamines. Again, a lovely spring plant, very easy to divide and spread around into dry, shaded areas. More hellebores. And so the, the garden design, it's a repetitive design and it's, the repetition creates a harmony. And within that harmony, there are surprises. So here's trillium seedlings seeding around this, veratrums poking up, more trilliums, erythroniums galore, podophyllums, there'll be lilies, the whole range. So I think I'll probably, well here's a nice, well it's we'll going to end, but here's, here's a little, um, erith little group of erythronium. This is a dense canis, one of the white forms of dense canis. And so it's not bad, just down here we've got the cardamine there, or cardemony if you prefer to say it that way. The Corydalis malkensis. Around here, more of the cardamom. Trilliums and all sorts will come in this bed. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. And as I say, if you're one of the, my new subscribers that just found me, welcome and thank you. I hope you can stay with me. Thank you come back and watch when I put on the next videos. See how the garden evolves over the weeks, months and years. So bye for now. Happy gardening.